Good morning, happy Wednesday. Welcome to today's What I Eat in a Day. I actually just got home from boot camp. I didn't film in the car on the way there because we've had some interesting things happen at boot camp over the last couple weeks. I'm gonna do a little fill you in on life update. I'm gonna talk to you about my fitness coach, give you an update on Lola. I'll let you know kind of what has been going on with boot camp. So I wasn't able to film on my way to work out this morning, but I did get my workout in. I also had my protein coffee. I drank about half of that before boot camp. Just finished that up and now I'm ready for some breakfast. So I'm actually going to have my meal prep that I made for the week. This is a cheesy sausage hash brown casserole. So it has diced hash browns, cheese, sausage, onions, lots of good stuff full of protein, good healthy carbs. I'll pair that with some blueberries for breakfast. Also need to clean my makeup brushes today. So I thought that I could give you all of these updates while we clean brushes. And then I also placed a nutrition order. They had some new things that I've never tried before. So that's coming today. So we're gonna do a little nutrition haul taste test a little bit later today. I'm going to throw dinner in the crock pot. We're gonna do a crock pot dinner. We just have a busy day today. So if you're excited for another What I Eat in a Day, give this video a thumbs up. Again, make sure you're subscribed and your bell's on so you don't miss any videos. Down in the description box, I'll put nutrition coaching where I offer personalized calories and macros. If you're new, hello, welcome. I have lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss tracking my macros and calories. So I do offer that service as a weight loss and nutrition coach as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching. Everything I share with you today will be down in the description box as well and come join our Facebook group. We'd love to have you. So let me warm up my breakfast and I'll be back to share points and calories. So here is my breakfast for today. I have one tenth of my breakfast casserole and 60 grams of blueberries. If you want the recipe for the casserole, it was in Monday's meal prep. So I'll link that meal prep video down below, but this is going to be my breakfast for this morning. It's boring, one million thousand demons surrounding me You pick and I fight, it's toxic You were the best I ever had But every second you were screwing me over So you saw that I just mixed up my Motivate Burn. This is something I like to have after breakfast. Today I opted for the No Stim Burn. So basically it means that it doesn't have caffeine, but I'm still getting all of the good benefits of burn. Fat burn, metabolism boost, focus, energy. It, this is the kiwi strawberry flavor. It is my all time favorite. It literally tastes like those kiwi strawberry water packets, but with so many health benefits. My big cup is off of Amazon. I'll link it for you. But I wanted to remind you that Motivate is still having their huge spring sale. Depending on how much you purchase, you get a certain additional percentage off. This is the biggest sale that Motivate has had to my knowledge. It's a great time to stock up on all of your favorites, including burn. Like I said, I use the Motivate No Stim Burn. It comes in little stick packs, which are great for travel. Leave it in your car, your purse, your desk drawer. That way you always have burn on hand. So this, and this is the regular Stim Burn. So this has all the same benefits as the No Stim that I use today, but this one actually has caffeine. So if you're looking for a little bit of a caffeine boost, you want to pick up the regular Motivate. If you want to skip the caffeine, but get the fat burn and the metabolism boost and the focus in the energy, pick up the no stim. So again, they come in the little packets and then they also come in the full size tub. Now I do have the full size tub of the cotton candy. This is one of my favorite flavors of Motivate. It's just this sweet kind of fruity flavor. So again, you can pick it up in the tub or the packet, or if you don't want to have to mix it into your water, but you still want all the benefits, burn also comes in capsule form. So you can pick this up. I always tell you guys that I use this when I travel. It's just really convenient to have a capsule to take. So again, burn comes in the tub, the single stick packs, and the capsules, and you can purchase Burn on the amazing spring sale from Motivate. I love Motivate. I've been using their products for well over a year. I use a lot of their different products, including some of their supplements, but I have to say that my hands down favorite thing is the Burn. So I will link Motivate down below. I'll put all of the sale information in the description box as well. But I'm ready for some fat burn, metabolism boost, energy, and focus. <laughs> Girl, just get it. Oh, yeah, Lola. Woo! Get it, get it, get it. Okay. <laughs> I'm 
going to have a morning snack. We're going to do a coffee, and then I'm going to have two of the Alyssa's Healthy Oatmeal Bites. Like I said, I always buy these off of her website. I know you can find them at some stores, but nowhere in my area carries them. I've checked. So I always order them on her website. So I'm going to have two of these, and then I'm going to make a copycat Starbucks drink. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I have been loving their lavender coffee. It is so good. I know it sounds weird because you're probably thinking I don't want to drink flowers, but that's not what it tastes like. It's fruity and then you get a little bit of lavender. It's, it's absolutely delicious. Well, I have been loving it. So I decided to Google it and see if I could find a way to make it at home. And I found a dupe recipe and I've made it. I made it yesterday and it's amazing. And it's using this right here. So this is from the brand T-Zone. This is the powder mix lavender milk tea. So I bought this right off of Amazon. I'll link it for you guys. It is 130 calories for one serving, which is 30 grams. It does have 25 carbs and 19 grams of sugar because it does contain sugar, but it's worth every carb and every calorie to me because it's so good in my coffee. And then I make it with the Fairlife milk so that I'm getting in some protein. It's all about balance and moderation. So I'm going to make up an iced coffee. I'll show you how I make the copycat lavender drink from Starbucks. If you like their lavender matcha, you can use any matcha and add the powder to it. You can make cold foam out of this by mixing this with some heavy whipping cream and, and whisking it up. I mean, there's so many things that you can do with this and it was super affordable on Amazon. I want to say maybe $18, which is the price of about three Starbucks drinks. So we're going to make up my lavender coffee and then have some oatmeal bites for a snack. I added my shots of espresso from my espresso machine, and then I'm going to add 30 grams of the lavender powder. And it dissolves really easy in the warm shots of espresso. And then I don't have a lot of Fairlife milk yet left, so I'm going to go ahead and see how much I have. Let me zero out my food scale. I'm hoping I have a full cup or eight ounces, but let's see. So I have 5.9 ounces of Fairlife milk. Normally I would just use a full cup to get in the extra protein. And then I'm going to add some ice. So here it is. Delicious, absolutely delicious. You could make this with cold brew, regular drip coffee. All you need is the lavender powder. You don't even have to add the milk. You could do just an Americano with the powder. This is a milk tea. I don't know what a milk tea is. I've never had it, but it does have that more milky consistency. So you could skip the milk altogether, but it is so good. It's worth every point, every calorie, every carb, every gram of sugar, absolutely delicious. So I'm going to have this and my Alyssa's cookies. So I'm going to take a little self-care moment. I am pretty sore from boot camp today and just from all of the exercise that I've done over the last few days. And I'm going to use mine and Troy's new foot massager. I'll turn you around and show it to you guys. Spoiler alert, it is so good. So here she is. This is the Tiss Care Foot Calf Leg Arm Massager. I'm telling you guys, best money spent right here. With all of Troy's health issues and my soreness from working out, I decided to invest in the Tiss Care Shiatsu Foot Massager. You guys, this is not your mama's foot massager. This thing is absolutely incredible. It has a 360 degree stand, a timer, customizable modes, air compression, heat, and a wireless remote. You can use this for your feet, your calves, and even your arms. You can adjust it between five intensity settings for a custom experience. It helps improve your blood circulation and relieve pain and can be used daily. Troy uses it daily for blood circulation. That is one of his health issues. It also offers heat, two different levels, heating up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit, which again helps promote blood circulation and relieve tension. It's designed with a low heat intensity that steadily encourages blood flow. You can alternate between different massage styles for a variety in each session. There's compression, rolling, and heat to best accommodate your needs. I love how you can adjust the stand bar. So if you want this to angle up, you can angle it up or place it flat on the ground.
ground for your preferred position. Super easy to use. Put your foot, calf, or ankle into the foot massager and then customize the setting for maximum relief. I also very much appreciate that you can remove the foot cover and wash it to help keep it clean and sanitary. It is hands down the best foot massager. Now we've had a couple in the past. We actually had one that stopped working and then the other one we gave to my in-laws. So we didn't have a foot massager. I'm so glad that I got the Tisk Care because it is hands down the best. I love all the different settings. I love that there's heat associated with it. I can use it on my sore arms, my sore legs, and like I said, Troy's been using it daily. So if you suffer with circulation issues or blood flow issues or just chronic pain in your feet, calves, ankles, arms, you're gonna love it. It's absolutely incredible. So I'll link it down below for you with a discount, literally best foot massager we've ever owned and one that we use daily. It is that time of the day where the dogs are going to get their special bone. So again, we use the smart bones. I really like this one. It's made with chicken and no rawhide. I buy these off of Amazon, so I'll link them for you. And here is what they look like. We have a very patient Lola. Would you like your special bone? There you go and an equally patient little Palmer. There you go, bud. I'm going to go ahead and get dinner in the crock pot. It's just about 10 a.m. and it takes five to six hours on low. I am making a creamy Italian chicken and I'm going to serve that with pasta. So really easy, you'll need some chicken breast, chicken tenders, whatever you prefer, one third less fat cream cheese, a packet of Italian seasoning, cream of chicken soup and salt and pepper. And then I'm going to serve it with the fiber gourmet pasta. That way we can get in some fiber and some protein. I buy this off of Nutrition, same place that we're gonna do the snack haul from. They have the best price and the biggest variety, the different shapes, and they just came out with a lasagna one that is so good, but it actually has less points and calories than traditional pasta, and you get 24 grams of fiber and seven grams of protein. So we're going to make up the pasta a little bit later, but we're going to get everything else into the crock pot. So first thing I'm going to do is add all of my chicken to the bottom of my crock pot. And then I'm going to add my packet of Italian dressing mix. And sprinkle that right on top of the chicken. And then a can of cream of chicken soup. I like the Healthy Request one the best. You can also do low fat or full fat, whatever your preference is. But I'm going to scoop that right on top. And then we're putting an entire package or block of one third less fat cream cheese. I think I'm going to cut it up a little bit though so I can distribute it over the top of the chicken. And then just season it with some salt and pepper. We're going to pop the lid on, set it on low for five to six hours. So I washed all my makeup sponges. I only use my beauty sponges one time. So I just put them in a bin in my closet and when they're dirty, I wash them. So those are all clean and ready to go. And then we have lots of brushes to clean. I always wash my brushes when I get down to the last about 20. I do use three to four every time I do an eye look and then I have all my face brushes as well. So we have lots of brushes to clean. I just use a couple of rags and then my Cinema Secrets. This is what I use to clean my brushes. It's amazing, especially for eyeshadow brushes because they dry instantly. So you can use them right away. I buy this at Sephora. I'll link it for you guys. I love it. It's literally the only thing I use to clean. So you're not gonna see me cleaning the brushes. You'll see me kind of going through the motion because I wanna give you all of those updates. So I have a little container here. I just pour my Cinema Secrets into that and that's what I use to clean my brushes. And like I said, it dries instantly so I just put my brush in and then just wipe it on the rag and it's clean. It's literally the best brush cleaner, I'm telling you, a definite must get. So let's first just start with a quick update on Lola. Not a lot has changed since last week's What I Eat in a Day. She goes back to the oncologist tomorrow, Tuesday, for her second chemo treatment. Week two is the least invasive portion of her chemo. It's done orally, where the other weeks of her chemo are done through IV. So this is really the fastest chemo session and the least invasive, the le less hard on her body of all of the other chemo sessions. It's week three and for the next couple weeks that are the hardest for her. Within about 48 hours of her session on Monday, her lymph nodes pretty much shrunk back to normal size. Now, I can't feel them. I'm not a doctor, so I'm sure that they're still a little bit enlarged, but I can't feel them at all. And 
in typical Lola fashion, her being a champ, she has acted completely normal the entire time. The only thing we've noticed is that she doesn't eat she doesn't have much of an appetite for her food. Now for treats, she'll eat them all, but for her food, her appetite kind of diminishes after chemo. In fact, she didn't eat for a couple of days, her kibble, so we ended up mixing it in with some canned food and then she ate it. And then last night, Troy actually took a couple of treats and mashed them in with her kibble and she ate that. So whatever we have to do to get her to eat, I think I'm going to pick up some rice. I'm completely out of rice and I'll make her some chicken and rice because I know that she'll eat that and it's a good food for dogs it's very bland so they can have that and her oncologist says just give her whatever she'll eat so right now she's eating treats so she's getting lots of those every day but she's doing really well other than that she's acting completely normal so we will see how the treatment goes tomorrow and what they say I'm honestly hoping for a pretty quick remission like last time and then quickly about boot camp before I jump into the long update which is about my fitness coach so we've had an interesting last couple of weeks at boot camp. If you didn't know, I work out outside. We're outside year round at 5 a.m. and we work out at a park. It's actually a skate park in our community. So it's actually in the community that I live in. Julia, our boot camp instructor, does have to rent it out. It is not open until daylight. So when we work out, I don't think you can actually use the park until maybe 7 a.m. So when we're there working out, the park is technically closed. And the only way that we're allowed to use it is because Julia actually pays to rent it out every month to teach boot camp. So she actually pays a fee to our community. I don't know what that looks like for her, but that's how we're allowed to actually be in the skate park and use it. So for the last couple of weeks, every time we're working out right around 515 in the morning, this gray car comes to the skate park and he, and we know it's a he because we've seen a reflection of a baseball cap in a man's face a couple of times because we'll be we'll be able to see through with the lights at the skate park. Well, this guy in this gray car has been coming every day for the last couple of weeks and he drives really slow through the entire skate park and we're working out on the curb and he will drive right up to the curb and drive really slow past us and then he leaves. And he's been doing that now for a couple of weeks, which in itself is weird and creepy. Well, on Friday of this last week, on we do circuits on Friday. So we are on the curb and we're also out in the actual parking lot. Palmer's playing with this toy. We're actually out in the actual parking lot as well. So we are on a station and then we're doing some type of cardio out in the parking lot. So we were doing our cardio on Friday and we saw, we were doing our workout on Friday and we saw him pull in. Well, a bunch of our girls were out in the parking lot doing the cardio portion and he did his typical where he drives into the skate park and then drives really slow in. Well, he comes around the corner where we're typically working out on the curb, which some of us were. And then some of us, like I said, were in the actual parking lot and he can't drive around. He can't drive in front of the curb because we're in the lot parking lot. So he pulls up and he, if we're right here, he pulls up and he stops. And we're like, okay, is he going to move? Is he going to back up? What's he going to do? Because he can't go forward because we're there. There's human beings in the parking lot. So he stays there and he stops and he doesn't move for a good minute or so. And we're like, okay. Okay, what's he gonna do? I mean, your only choice, dude, is to back up. And really, why would you even come that close to us? I mean, within feet of people in the parking lot. So eventually, he does back up, turns around, and he speeds out of the parking lot. Unacceptably fast, because he's mad. He's annoyed that we were in his way. I don't know what he's annoyed about because he's not supposed to be there, because the park isn't even open. So he speeds out, and we're like, what the heck is going on? So my friend Kate at boot camp, her wife is a, she's in security. So Kate messaged me yesterday and said that buddy, her wife was going to come to boot camp this morning, sit in her car and wait for him to show up and get his license plate so that we can call it into the police because it's getting to the point that it's ridiculous. And now he's essentially non in a way threatening us by pulling right up and, and not leaving when he knows that we're there every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, he's been coming for weeks. So I get there today, I pull in, it's about 4.57, and I see him. And he is parked as he's getting ready to exit out of the park. So he's coming around the corner from the parking lot and he stops about 30 feet back from the light. There is a light at the intersection of the park and the main road and he stops there. So I pull into the parking lot and I thought, 
you know what, I'm gonna drive around and I'm gonna get behind him and I'm gonna get his license plate number. So I take, I drive into the park and then make a little loop so that I can get back around and get behind him. And as I'm pulling up behind him, he scoots forward to leave. Well, because there's a light there, he can't go. There's cars and the light is red. So I'm able to pull up behind him and get his license plate number. So I texted it to myself and then he pulls out and he leaves. So. Now it's about 4.58 a.m. and now everybody's starting to show up because our class starts at five. So Julia pulls in and I went up to Julia and I said, hey, I got his license plate. He was just here, which was weird. I've never seen him before class. Like I said, he always comes around 5.15, makes his lap through the parking lot. And so I wasn't sure if he was going to come back or not, but he had already been there that morning. So I gave his license plate to Julia and she called it into the non-emergency line. Well, long story short, the police show up during her workout today. So our workout was a little weird today. It was a little less intense, a little less organized because of everything going on. And they pull up and Julia gives her statement, lets them know about what happened on Friday, gives them the license plate number. And he said that he was going to look into it and that he would come back on Wednesday and make sure that the guy didn't show back up again. So he never came back today for the rest of our workout because he was there before we even got there, which was weird. He's never done that before. Like I said, he's always there when we're working out. So we've officially called it into the police and they are going to do what they need to do. And I'm assuming he'll give us an update again when he shows up on Wednesday, just to make sure that he, the guy doesn't come back. And actually Kate's wife came this morning too. She was going to sit there while we did boot camp and wait for him. Well, since I got his plate before boot camp started, she decided to go ahead and head home because she doesn't want to be there at 5 a.m. She's not even working out. So it's just been really weird. I mean, we live in a really, really safe community. I've never felt unsafe here. You guys know I walk by myself all the time outside. I'm not sure who this guy is or what he's doing, but hopefully between the encounter today and then the police being called and I'm assuming they'll contact him or whatever they do, hopefully he stops showing up, but it's so weird. I just don't understand why he would be doing that. I don't know what his intentions are, but clearly they're not good. And like I said, Friday, he was really mad that we were in his way and he speeded out of the park. So that was when we decided, okay, we're gonna get his license plate and call the police. So I'll keep you guys posted, but that's the latest with boot camp. Okay, and then the situation with my fitness coach. This is a long story, so I'm going to keep it short because we'll be here all day, but you guys know that I hired a fitness coach back around the end of October of last year because my intention as of January 1st was to go into a cut, and I wanted someone to guide me through nutrition, but mainly guide me through fitness since I am a weight loss and nutrition coach. I mean, I can do my own macros, but I wanted someone who could basically guide me and support me through a cut and set me up with, fit, with a fitness with a workout that's going to help me reach my fitness goal. So I had heard about this particular coach through another YouTuber actually, and I had done a little bit of research into her and she primarily works with bodybuilders or female fitness competitors, but she seemed to be very knowledgeable in fitness, which like I said is what I was mainly looking for with a little bit of help with food and accountability. So I hired her back in October, had a conversation with her over the phone before I actually hired her, let her know what my goals were, let her know that I wasn't really in weight loss mode, that I'm not really looking to lose any weight. I would love to lean down if that's possible, but I don't wanna be in a severe deficit. I don't want to restrict or eliminate foods. I want to basically be able to live my life while reaching my goals. That's the stage that I'm at in my journey. So I had this long conversation with her and after that conversation, I decided to go ahead and sign up with her for a full year. Her prices are pretty expensive. If you paid month to month, it was $250 a month which is a lot, but if you paid for a full year, it ended up being about $167 a month. And I was confident in her ability to help me, and we had that conversation on the phone and we seemed to align really well, so I decided to go ahead and bite the bullet and pay for a full year. Now, a full year with her was $2,000, so it was not a small investment, it was a large sum of money, but like I said, I felt confident after our conversation and just really hearing what she could do for me and how we aligned goal-wise. So I hired her in October, 
over and I immediately started following the food plan that she gave me, the macros that she gave me. I started doing the workouts that she put into the app. We did have a little bit of banter on the workout. She was expecting me to do much more cardio than I typically do. Since I'm not in weight loss mode, I'm not a cardio queen. I prefer to lift weights. The only cardio that I do is what I get at boot camp, the three days a week. And then I do like to walk and hike. And I mean, that's considered exercise or cardio, depending on how high your heart rate gets. So that's where we started having our first little disagreement was on the amount of cardio, but we did come to an agreement on the cardio prior to the cut. Well, part of what we did each week, part of what I did each week with her is check in via the app. So there was actually a fitness app that she used where she put all of my food, my workouts, and all of my check-ins, pictures, measurements, weight, everything went into that app and all the communication was done through the app that she used. So I started checking in with her, logging everything in the app, sending her my food log through Lose It. And what was happening was I would check in with her on Friday morning, first thing in the morning before I even went to boot camp. So 4 a.m. my time, I would do my check-in with her and I wasn't hearing from her until Sunday night or even, or most of the time, even on Monday. So days after I checked in with her and the issue with that is if there was any modifications or changes that needed to be made, I wasn't hearing from, I wasn't getting those until the beginning of the next week only a few days out from the next check-in. So there really wasn't a lot of time to implement those changes. So this kept happening with check-ins. It happened all through the month of November in the beginning of December. So I finally sent her a message through the app and asked her what her turnaround time was for check-ins. My old fitness coach that I had prior to my cosmetic surgery, literally hours, and I would hear back from her. Now, I don't expect that. I know that it could potentially be a day or maybe even two days, but three, four days, to hear back doesn't seem reasonable to me. So I sent her a message and she responded and said that her turnaround time is typically by end of day on Sunday. So I thought, okay, well now that I've brought it up, now that I've asked her about it, she'll get a little bit better about responding by end of day on Sunday. So I continued checking in with her the first part of December and now I, and everything was great for about a week. She was responding rather quickly. If I sent her a message through the app, she was responding. I also had her phone number to text her. I had her email. So I was able to get in touch with her one way or another. It wasn't always through the app. Sometimes I would send her a message and it would take her days to even get back to me. And sometimes it was something I needed to know right away. So then I would text her or email her. Just her response time in general was pretty terrible. Well, after about that first week of things improving, it got worse. I wasn't hearing from her now until Tuesday, sometimes even for me Wednesday morning because she wouldn't respond to me till I was already in bed on Tuesday. Also in December, we talked about my cut that was going to be starting January 1st. And I told her a handful of times how important it was for me to get all of the details from her long before January 1st so that I would have time to plan, get the correct food in my house if there were specific food she wanted to eat. I knew that she was going to ask me for additional cardio with a cut and I wanted to make sure that I was able to at least let her know if that was doable for me or we could come to some type of agreement on everything relating to the cut before January 1st. Well, it was getting to be the end of December and I still didn't hear from her about my cut. I had nothing. I didn't have food. I didn't have exercise. I had nothing. And her response time was getting worse and worse and worse with my check-in. So uh, towards the end of December, I sent her an email. And in that email, I was very, very nice. And I essentially just told her that our coaching relationship was going to work out. And I explained to her about the response time and the fact that she had told me it would be Sunday and now it's moving into Tuesday and that it takes her just a long time to respond in general and I always feel like I'm, I don't ever have all of the information and talked about my cut and how I was really nervous that I didn't receive anything from her and we're pushing the end of December. So I essentially asked her for a refund of my remaining months, which at that time was about $1,700 because I had only been working with her a couple of months. So she didn't respond. So I ended up sending her a text and said, hey, I sent you an email. Can you get back to me? And then she read my email in typical Brenda fashion. So she responded and said that she does not offer discount or she does not offer refunds and she wishes me well on my fitness journey. So I was like, uh, no, I'm not just going to give you my $2,000 and walk away. That, that's not going to happen. So I messaged her back and basically told her that. And I was like, listen, I hired you because I wanted to work with you and I don't feel like I'm getting my money's worth. You, your response time is 
unacceptable and just went through the whole thing again. And I told her, listen, I'm hoping that things will improve now that we've had this conversation kind of cleared the air. She sent me everything for my cut on December 29th, on December 30th. So one day in advance before my cut start, started the cardio she was requesting again was something i wasn't able to do so we talked about that came to an agreement on the cardio which was still more than i wanted to do and we started a cut on january 1st throughout my entire entire eight week cut so the two months january and february we were right back to no response she kept changing things every time i would check in with her she would change something but again i wasn't getting a response from her until halfway through the next week so i was never able to implement those changes in time to see a difference on fridays when i would check in and it was literally a disaster my entire cut I never got a clear answer. Again, her response time continued to be just beyond terrible. So I decided that I would reach out to my credit card company, the one that I paid for the coaching through and dispute the charge and basically be done with it. And I didn't want to say anything to her because if I told her that I was going to dispute the charge, she would say, see you later. And again, I would be losing a large chunk of money. So I was going to dispute the charge and see if I could get any resolution from my credit card company. Well, they said that they were unable to help me because when I paid for her services, the $2,000, I paid it off. I never carry a credit card balance, so I paid it in full. And so because I didn't have it still sitting on my account, they couldn't help me with the dispute. So I was really grateful that I didn't tell Brenda because again, I would have lost all my money. She would have been like, see you later. Coffee break. I was beyond frustrated at this point because here I am almost through my entire eight week cut, basically doing it without her because I was never able to get a clear answer on anything. She never was efficient enough to actually help me enough earlier enough in the week for me to make the changes. So I decided after my cut, so that ended the end of February. So the beginning of March, I sent her another email. And I said, listen, and I went through everything, everything we talked about before, everything that happened during our cut, letting her know again how disappointed I was in her services and how I didn't feel like I ever received what I paid for. And now I've spent all this money with her and I've been essentially navigating the cut on my own. Thank goodness that I'm a nutrition coach so that I could do that because one of you may not be able to navigate a cut on your own without support and a cut that you paid good money for. So I once again asked her for a refund. Well, this time she responded and it was like four days later, but she did respond and she said, like I told you, I don't give refunds. However, here's what we can do. Option one, you can continue working with me and I will redo all of your information now that you're out of your cut and get you set up back to your normal workout routine and normal food. Number two, I can put your account on hold and you can come back to me when you're ready. Well, it's not about me being ready because what's going to change between now and me coming back later, I'm still not going to be getting a response from her. I'm still going to be incredibly frustrated. So that was out. And then number three was she said, I can issue you a partial refund of your remaining months. So I thought long and hard about it. I had a conversation with Troy. I had a conversation with my friend Melissa at boot camp. And I ultimately decided I was going to give her one last chance because like I said, I signed up with her and I paid for her services because I really wanted to work with her. I was really excited to have someone in my corner with fitness knowledge like her. So I messaged her back and said, Hey, I'm going to stick this out for one more month. And like I said, in all of our previous correspondence that I hope that, you know, response time continues to improve and that we're able to work together more efficiently. Well, that was my first mistake. I should have taken the refund and ran because the next month was even worse. I didn't even make it through an entire month before I decided to go ahead and call it quit. So I sent her an email about two and a half weeks later. In a nutshell, told her again that I this isn't working out and that I think at this point it's best for both of us to kind of cut our losses and move out. That I'm just not the move on. I'm not the right client for her. She's not the right coach for me. So I was going to take her up on her offer of a partial refund. And so I had listed out in my email that I was owed about $1,400 at this point and I would be willing to settle for a refund of a thousand, basically giving her $400. So I emailed that off and she responded and basically blamed everything on me, just said that I wasn't listening to her and that I don't trust her process and people who listen to her and trust her are successful. She just basically turned everything around on me. Never once in any of our correspondence did she apologize, even for the way I felt 
Even the cop-out apology of, oh, I'm sorry you feel that way, nothing. Literally zero accountability still took zero accountability. So in this email, oh, this still makes me so mad to this day. She says, so for the refund, I did tell you that I would give you a partial refund. So I will go ahead and honor that. And she said that since I signed up for a year, I got the $167 a month price. And since I didn't stay with her for an entire year, I basically was going to the month to month price of $250 per month. So she was now going to charge me $250 per month for the four months that I worked with her, the four months that I got absolutely nothing from her, which equaled $1,000 and that she was willing to refund me 30% of my remaining $1,000 and that she would refund me $300. $300 out of the $1,400 that I was owed. She wanted to refund me $300. And she's and put me at the month to month price since I didn't stay with her for a year. And I was so mad because the only reason I didn't stay with her had nothing to do with me choosing to bail out. It was because she was a terrible coach, hands down the worst coach I've ever worked with. I didn't wanna keep working with her and getting nothing out of it. I was so livid, you guys, you have no idea how mad I was. So I responded to her, I should still be at the 167 per month, regardless if I stayed with her for a full year and explained that, you know, I'm not leaving because I want to, I'm leaving because this doesn't work out. Well, long story short, she refused to refund me anything other than the $300 and basically said that I could take the $300 from her or nothing. It took her almost a month, but she refunded me $300. So basically I paid $1,700 to her for four months of coaching. Didn't get anything out of those four months of coaching besides a lot of frustration and heartache and disappointment. But I will tell you, the minute that I got the $300 refund, I went into the app to delete the app. And imagine how quick she was to remove me from the app. It wasn't even 24 hours and she had went in and took me off of the app. She couldn't respond to me for days, but she can remove me from the app, cancel my app within 24 hours. So I found that to be quite interesting. So I went into the app, saw that she deleted me. I went ahead and deleted the app. Haven't spoken with her since. To be honest with you, even though I lost all that money and I'm so mad at myself for losing all that money, I'm also beyond relieved that I don't have to deal with her anymore because it was incredibly stressful for me. Just from the get-go, from day one, from about week three, it was a terrible, terrible experience. At this point in my journey and with my knowledge of nutrition, I just think I'm better off just going through a workout app rather than having a specific coach. So I have been working with a fitness app that I heard about actually through another YouTuber and I decided to look into it once I stopped working with Brenda. It's actually a workout app and with the app, you actually are assigned to a coach that helps you navigate through your workouts, navigate through your food. You can actually have one-on-one -on -one calls with that with the coach where with Brenda, she didn't do any type of calls. So my only communication or lack of communication with her was through the phone or an app. So I was really excited to hear about this fitness, this work, this fitness and health app. So I downloaded it. There's actually a free trial. I've been utilizing that. So far, I'm really loving it. I haven't shared it with you guys because I want to give it a solid month of use before I share it with you. I want to make sure that I continue to like it. I've been loving the coach that I'm assigned to as part of the app. It's so affordable. And it's been really, really fantastic. I've truly been loving it. So I will give you guys all the scoop on the app probably mid-April once I've been using it for about a month or so and let you know my thoughts. But that's what happened with my fitness coach. And the silver lining is that I don't have to worry about the stress anymore. And I was able to find this other app that I've been using that I've been loving. So fingers crossed this continues to be as great as it has. And just take heed in my experiences hiring an online fitness coach, someone that you don't know, someone that you don't have any type of relationship with is maybe not the best decision. And I will absolutely never be doing that again. All right, all of my brushes are clean. I'm so happy. This is such a good feeling to have everything cleaned and ready to go. So I'm going to warm up some lunch. I have a coaching call here in about 20 minutes. So I'm going to have my meal prep that I prepped during the week. Like I shared with breakfast, if you miss Monday's meal prep, this is also in there. This is basically a copycat Chipotle bowl packed with protein, fiber, vegetables. I have 93% ground turkey, four ounces cooked of that. I have cilantro, lime, quinoa, 
delicious. Some corn and some black beans. I'm going to top that with 30 grams of avocado and two tablespoons of full fat sour cream. So here's my copycat Chipotle bowl. Who needs Chipotle when you can make this at home? I did add my two tablespoons of sour cream and my 30 grams of avocado. I'll go ahead and put all the information here on the screen for you. So my nutrition order just arrived. I actually placed an order for some fiber gourmet pasta and then I decided to get a bunch of snacks to try. There was a lot of new stuff on the Nutrition website and I thought, let's order some, let's test them out, let's try them, and I thought we could do that together. So we're gonna taste test everything new from Nutrition. First up are these Beyond Twist pretzels. I actually saw my friend Linda in my Facebook group post about these and she really liked these and you guys know how much I love pretzels. These are the Beyond Twist low carb pretzels. They are keto friendly, 18 grams of protein. That's insane. Good source of fiber. I got the cheddar and sour cream. A serving is 17 pretzels or 26, 28 grams for 120 calories. There's only six carbohydrates, 18 grams of protein, and three grams of fiber. So I was excited to see Linda post about these and even more excited to see them on Nutrition. I do have a discount for Nutrition. I'll link it down below for you. Ooh, they smell really good. They look just like regular pretzels. They taste pretty similar to regular pretzels. The flavoring is really, really good. They're salty. They do have a little bit of more of a whole wheat pretzel taste to them. On the back, it says what's in here is wheat protein, health sense flour, salt, sunflower, oil, and pea protein. So I do kind of taste the protein, not in a bad way, but I do kind of taste it. These are really good though. And then, you know I love pure protein protein bars. Well, I saw that they had pop crisps. And I also love a good pop chip, but there's no protein in there. So I thought, let's try ones that have 12 grams of protein. I got the flavor Hickory Barbecue. The entire bag is 150 calories and has 12 grams of protein, less than one gram of fiber. They look just like the pop chips. There's a lot of them in here. Those are really good. The barbecue is sweet and tangy tastes just like a pop chip. So I will not be buying pop chips when I can buy these and get 12 grams of protein. And then I saw this Catalina Crunch. You know how much I love my Catalina Crunch. This is a flavor I've never seen before. And this is the blueberry muffin cereal. Now half of a cup is 130 calories. It has 10 grams of protein and seven grams of fiber. I'll actually be putting Catalina Crunch on my yogurt bowl for dessert tonight. I'm having a yogurt bowl for dessert. Ooh, it smells like a blueberry muffin. You can actually see the cereal and the little dried blueberries. So good. So good. It legitimately tastes like a blueberry muffin. I don't know how they did that. This is good. This is my favorite flavor of Catalina Crunch. It says new and I've never seen it anywhere other than Nutrition. I'm going to be ordering some more of this. This is so good. If you love blueberry muffins or blueberry flavor, it's so good. It's so crunchy, it's sweet. It's so much blueberry flavor, 10 out of 10. And then I got two Quest snacks. I've actually never seen these before. First is the Quest Crunchy Protein Puff. So they look like little puffed Cheetos, 17 grams of protein, 130 calories and no fiber. They're little individual bags, so kind of like the Quest chip. So the whole bag is only 130 calories. Here's what they look like. Cheesy, crunchy, no protein aftertaste. You know I don't like a lot of the Quest chips. I really only like the taco ones. These are really good. They literally taste like a Cheeto, maybe not as artificial cheese as a Cheeto, but really good cheese flavor, crunchy. And this pack is, this is, full, full too for the calories. And you get four of these little bags in the box. And then I was so excited for these. These are the cheese crackers. So basically a cheese it do. Fun fact about me, cheese its are my all time favorite cracker. I still to this day, even with a healed relationship with food, have a hard time with cheese it So I don't usually buy them, but I saw that Quest had these little individual bags. Each bag is 130 calories, 10 grams of protein, five grams of fiber. Did I say no fiber? Okay, so the puffs have no fiber. The crackers actually have five grams of fiber. They look like a Cheez-It. So good, so good. So cheesy, crunchy, Cheez-It vibes with 10 grams of protein. 
I'm pretty sure this is a bigger serving than Cheeto Cheez Its, and again, 130 calories. I think I found my new favorite cracker. And lastly, I had to get something sweet. You know I love a good sweet treat. This is from the brand High Key. Now I've tried their cookies. Their cookies are really good. These are their candy bars, and I got mine in fluffy nougat. Seven grams of fiber. Each little bar is only 70 calories, and it has two grams of protein. I love that there's fiber in there. This whole bar is only 70 calories? Wow. Wow, and there's four of them in here. High and awesome, not sugar. You've nougat this. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this whole thing is 70 calories. Look at that. Mmm. Okay, Heike. That's really good. It tastes a lot like a Three Musketeers. That's the vibe that I get from it. I will say that there's a little bit of cooling effect, you know, from the sugar alcohols. I definitely get that little bit of cooling. It's not bad at all though, and it's really just at the end of the piece of chocolate, but 70 calories for this little candy bar is incredible, and it does truly taste really, really good. But every one of these is really good. I'm so excited about them. Let me know if you've tried any of these or if you're gonna order some of these. Again, I'll link Nutrition for you with that discount. All right, it is afternoon snack time. I'm keeping it simple since we taste tested all those things from Nutrition. I'm not super hungry, but I wanna get in some added protein today. I'm going to only have one protein supplement, and I'm going to try to hit my protein goal today with food. So I'm I'm going to have three quarters of a cup of Good Culture Cottage Cheese. This is one of the best ways to get in protein. One of the best ways, and if you don't like the texture of cottage cheese, melt it, blend it, figure out a way to use it because it's such a great source of protein. I love Good Culture, nice clean ingredients, no carrageenan. And then I'm going to do 75 grams of blackberries on top. I like a good sweet cottage cheese, so that's going to be my snack. The chicken is done. I just shredded it all up with my fork. It smells and looks so good. I have the pasta cooking on the stove. The fiber gourmet pasta takes a while to cook, about 20 minutes. So I have that cooking and then I'll plate everything up and I'll be back to share dinner. Here is dinner. So the recipe makes six servings total. I divided the pasta out, divided the creamy Italian chicken out, topped it with a little bit of parsley. So I'll go ahead and put points, calories, macros here on the screen for you. I'm going to go ahead and make up a yogurt bowl for dessert. Like I said, I'm really focused on trying to get as much protein as I can from food today and just utilizing my protein coffee this morning as my supplement. So I'm going to do an Oikos Triple Zero yogurt. This is in mixed berry. This gives me 15 grams of protein. So it's a great base for a sweet treat or a dessert. And then I have a banana. I'm going to do half of a banana on top of my yogurt. And then I'm going to use my Catalina Crunch. Again, a great way to get in protein, add a crunch to the yogurt bowl. This is the Honey Graham. It has 11 grams of protein and nine grams of fiber per half of a cup. I usually only put on a quarter cup. I might do half. You know what, I'm gonna do half of a cup today just so I can get in the full 11 grams of protein and nine grams of fiber. And I did only do half of a banana. And then I'm going to do just a sprinkle of little mini chocolate chips, a teaspoon. A teaspoon of chocolate chips just for that whole chocolate crunchy vibe. So it is the end of the night. I'm going to get my pajamas on, wash my face. It's the season finale of The Bachelor. Excuse me. <laughs> it's the season finale of The Bachelor. I'm gonna snuggle up with Lola and watch the finale. I'm super excited to see who he picks. Let me know down below, do you watch The Bachelor, Bachelorette? And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, turn your bell on. Don't forget to check out the description box. I will link Motivate, the Tisk Care Foot Massager, everything else I shared with you today, as well as Nutrition. Don't forget, I do have a discount for them if you wanna pick up some of those goodies. And of course, tonight's dinner recipe is on my website. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.